I'm too tall, so I have to hold the microphone. Let's go. So in 2019, I got my first two pack llamas, Paco and Gus Gus. Now, before we go too far, I think it's important for everyone to know the difference between alpacas and llamas. Alpacas are not pack animals, even though pack is in the name. So it's important to be able to tell them apart. So this infographic will give you a pretty good idea. An alpaca weighs 150 pounds, has soft fleece, listens to human commands, eats grass, is pretty even-tempered, travels in herds. A llama, on the other hand, weighs 400 pounds, probably has a knife in its fur, listens to Norwegian death metal, and will kill you the first chance it gets. So I got into llamas because I like eating elk meat. And llamas gave me the ability to go farther into the backcountry, carry more gear, and if I get lucky, I can get an elk out in one trip by myself. So <clears throat> the, the biggest reason why I chose llamas over other pack stock like horses or mules is because of how low maintenance they are. Llamas eat less than horses or mules as a percentage of their body weight, they drink less, and they can carry more. This lets me camp in places with less grass, less water, and gives me greater flexibility in the mountains. This holds true both in the summer and the winter. Uh, because they eat so little, I never have to bring in hay. And with their heavy wool coats, they can withstand the harshest winter conditions. On this morning, it was 15 degrees below zero, and we got 18 inches of snow overnight, and they didn't bat an eye. Now, the super secret reason that I like llamas is that they attract elk. Don't tell anybody I told you that. But on this morning, I hiked two miles in the snow, cut a set of elk tracks, and then followed them back to within 40 yards of my tent. So I should have just stayed in camp that morning. The biggest difference between llamas and horses or mules is that you don't ride llamas, but instead they follow you carrying your gear. The, the nice advantage though is pretty much anywhere you can go, a llama can go. They descend from guanacos, which are essentially the mountain goats of the Andes. As far as how much they can carry, uh, a pretty good rule of thumb is 20 to 25% of their body weight. My llamas weigh between 300 and 400 pounds, so your really starting point is 70 to 90 pounds of gear per llama, which saves a lot of wear and tear on your back, not having to carry that in the mountains. In some instances, you can even go beyond that, um, because meat is dense and it rides close to the body, you can go heavier. I've put 120 pounds of meat on my most athletic packer, and he still tried to pull me up the mountain. So I was trying my best to slow him down, and I just couldn't do it. So if you, and <clears throat> the nice thing too is you can carry, bring as many llamas as you want. I've seen llama strings 20 animals long. Uh, in this particular case, the llamas were packing two elk out of the mountains on an eight mile pack out. And I didn't have to carry a pound of meat or a pound of gear. All I had was just, you know, my bare essentials in my pack. So if you do want to get into llamas and have them assist you in the backcountry, the easiest way is simply to rent them. So there are a handful of us in Montana that rent pack llamas, which is a great way for you to get into it without having the overhead and the expense of maintaining them and owning them yourself. If you do decide to own llamas, really the first consideration is you either want to get males or females, but not both, unless you're into nonstop llama drama. Males and females can pack equally well, but if the males can see the females, they get very distracted. So as far as land requirements, it really depends on you know, what the quality of your forage is. So I have seven acres that I rent, for example, where I keep my males, and there's so much grass there, they can't eat it all in a year, and I never have to feed hay. Uh, they basically just chow down and have a great time. On the other hand, I've got a friend who keeps five llamas in his backyard. Uh, maybe not necessarily my recommended approach because llamas like to run around, but he's able to meter out hay to them at a very specific rate and keep them at a healthy weight. Llamas only eat about seven pounds of grass a day, so it's pretty easy to maintain a small herd, even with a small space. As far as maintenance goes, um, again, pretty low maintenance. Give them shots once or twice a year. 
you'll trim their toenails every few months, and they may need a haircut depending on heavy, how heavy their wool is. Uh, a word of caution, watch where you're putting your teeth when you're giving them a haircut. <laughs> so if you do decide to start looking for llamas, you really want to look for a reputable breeder. Craigslist is not your friend. There's llamas on Craigslist all the time, but be prepared to turn down 99.9% .9 of the llamas you see until you find one with short wool, good bone structure, good athleticism. So this is Gus Gus, one of my first two llamas, standing behind Hinto, who's my top stud. And you can see the difference. Gus Gus is short, he's fat, and he's not very smart, whereas Hinto is 51 inches tall at the shoulders, has long legs, and is an elite athlete. This is Yeti, she's actually the tallest female llama in the world, um, and she also has some of the shortest wool that I've ever seen on a llama. Height is a real advantage in the mountains. Um, just having a longer stride gives you greater stamina. You're not taking as many steps, you're not tiring as quickly, and it's easier to navigate obstacles like deadfall. So again, our beloved Gus Gus, 13 miles into the backcountry when he ran out of steam. <laughs> Ultimately, any llama can pack, but it's a matter of you know, how far, under how much load, under what conditions. It's just like every human can swim just about, but not every human is Michael Phelps. And llama breeders are creating the Michael Phelpses of the world. As a final word of caution, if you do decide to own llamas, be careful, because you'll start with two, and once you see how cute they are, you'll have 35. <laughs> Thank you so much.